The purpose of this video is to show how we can deploy the OpenIAM stack to a Kubernetes cluster. For people interested in this kind of deployment, we have a, a project, uh, an open source project on our Bitbucket uh, called Kubernetes Docker Configuration. This project contains all the necessary components required to deploy uh, to a Kubernetes environment. And we support three types of environment. One is AWS, another is Google Cloud, and the third is an internal uh, Kubernetes cluster, which can be private, public, it's just not AWS or Google Cloud. It can even be another cloud provider. So in this tutorial, we will be discussing how uh, we will be deploying, how we can deploy to AWS. So let's get started. So the first step is uh, to check out this project, which I have already done, and then switch, switch to the necessary branch. I'm already on the latest uh, production branch, so I'm going to set up the environment. And then I'm going to generate uh, certificates. And these certificates allow uh, communication into something called Vault and Vault stores uh, passwords. That way we're not uh, exposing them in property files or anywhere else in plain text that a malicious user can use them. So then we're going to open up the project and we see that uh, one of the steps which is outlined in the readme is to change this string to whatever cloud environment you're using. It could be Google Cloud, it could be Helm, which is a private Kubernetes cluster. But for this tutorial, we're going to um, deploy to AWS. So let's leave it at that. Run Terraform in it. and then run Terraform apply. And this step will take a while, uh, approximately 25 minutes. Uh, 15 minutes of that is spent bringing up the AWS infrastructure, such as Elasticsearch, Redis, RDS, the actual Elastic uh, Elastic Kubernetes service and others that we use. So uh, while we wait for that, uh, let's go over just a few things that you can configure uh, in the build. So we have a Terraform TFRs file which allows you to configure basically everything in the build. One thing you can set is the region. You can set the number of uh, cluster, number of uh, servers in your Kubernetes cluster. 
you can set the replica count of each component, each custom component that we deploy. You can configure the database that you would like as the backend. So we support MariaDB, Postgres, Oracle, MS SQL in AWS, MariaDB in Postgres in Google Cloud. And if you're deploying to a, a custom environment, it can be any one of these four. So username, password settings, you can configure those. Uh, Oracle can, requires uh, some more configuration. And then there is configuration for Google and for AWS. For Redis, we support uh, configurations related to the instance class. Same for RDS, we also support the instance class uh, setting. So if you would like to scale this up to a large, you are free to do that. Same for Elasticsearch. And finally, uh, by default in AWS, we, um, we, we provide uh, this type of machine type for the EKS cluster, uh, but you're free to make this larger. Um, as you see fit. This default uh, configuration is approximately 32 gigs and 8 virtual CPUs. So let's wait for this to finish. It will take a while. You can see the infrastructure has been created and Terraform has finished running. So let's check AWS and see what was created. So we can see we have run one running instance and that's our EKS server. We can see that an EKS cluster has been created. And we see that our RDS instance, which is MariaDB, has also been created. So let's take a look at what pods are running. We can see that things are initializing and coming up. So let's wait for them to come up. So as you can see, all the pods have come up. And let's take a look at the services. So this is now our AWS endpoint. Let's hit it. Let's skip this SSH, SSL error. The certificate was uh, self-generated. Let's log in as a default user. Change the password. <laughs> Answer this. Challenge response questions.
set up the main content provider. Most of these fields are pre-populated with what we need. And we're done. You now have an OpenIM instance deployed to a Kubernetes cluster in AWS.